Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa, I read, and welcome to another video, and today I'm going to be finishing two very popular book series. So I've decided to reread and also finish two book series that are super popular. They're both written by the same author, and the two series are The Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare, and the second book series is The Infernal Devices by also Cassandra Clare. I have been rereading The Infernal Devices. I reread City of Bones, and I am going to continue on with City of Ashes and then City of Glass. I have read all these books before, but I felt like rereading them because why not? And then I reread The Infernal Devices, Clockwork Angel, and Clockwork Prince, but now I have to move on to Clockwork Princess, which I haven't read before. So I'm really excited to continue on with the series and finally finish it after all these years. And I don't know, I just really wanted to reread the series. I was in a very paranormal mood, and so I wanted to reread this series and finally complete the infernal devices. So how about you come along with me in this reading vlog? I am going to start with City of Ashes. Okay, so I started City of Ashes. I read a little bit last night and some this morning, not very much. I read 64. I've been like daydreaming a lot, so I haven't been able to just like focus. The thing that's like really interesting specifically about this series is that the characters are so dang young. Like Claire is 15 in this book and sometimes I forget that why is for like teen readers this is very much like a teen story and they act like teenagers and things like that so i'm coming at it like very not nearly as judgmental because i think it's really important to have stories for teenagers about teenagers who act like teenagers and it doesn't like the choices that they make don't bother me because like i'm very sympathetic to it you know being a mother like understanding that you know kids will make mistakes and make choices that aren't great um so i am really enjoying it i just do like this world and i do like coming of age stories like i like buffy the vampire slayer right so like obviously i like those kind of stories i feel like why has changed so much though since the series came out i just feel like ya now is not why what it was this is for teenagers right like some of the action may be dark or maybe a little bit horrific but like it's for teens they make teen choices they have teen feelings <laughs> where i feel like sometimes the stories that are being marketed as ya is actually more adult or maybe more like new adult and i think it's because the people who read ya are like me right like who are older and like those kind of stories but really they're adult stories they're just happen to be marketed as ya and it's not that teens can't read it either but this to me feels very much like actually what ya is supposed to be so i don't know i just thought that was really interesting i'm so used to like ya characters being like 17 basically in an adult 
where this is like, what are they supposed to be in grade 10 or something? Maybe even grade nine. They're quite young <laughs> still. Where the infernal devices, even though they're maybe like 16, 17, they act older because it's like historical. And in, in a historical setting like that, Tessa could have be married off. Like she's 16, I think, maybe 17. There's been a lot of girls at age in that time who get married off at that young. It's different. I like it though, I'm enjoying myself. Um, obviously this is the fallout of what happened in book one. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make this vlog spoiler free, but I think I'm gonna save my spoiler thoughts at some point in this vlog because there are things I wanna talk about and I like wanna talk about them now, but I can't. <laughs> so I will have a portion later on because like I said, I'm, since I'm older and I'm coming at the story very differently, I have different opinions about Clary, about Jace, about Valentine. I just see things very differently. The adults are acting a little bit immature, but sometimes adults act immature. Like sometimes they're stupid. <laughs> but it is interesting watching the adult drama as well because you're seeing it from Clary's perspective, but like as an adult, you kind of know what's going on more so than maybe if you were a teenager. And I don't know, it's just really interesting. Oh, the other thing I wanna say was with book one, so with City of Bones, I remembered a lot. Like I remembered a lot of it. I was kind of surprised. Obviously there were still some surprises, but I remember this, I like barely remember. I have some things in my mind that I remember. I barely remember book three too. Like I'm interested to see the interaction between Clary and Jace. Because like I know like their relationship is like the most controversial, but I'm coming at this a lot differently now because it's like, you know, they're teenagers, like give them a break, you know? <laughs> they don't know what they're doing, they're confused. And Valentine is awful. And I think that's more the point is Valentine is awful and not about them because in a lot of ways we should give them a lot more grace because they're teens and they don't really know what they're doing. But Valentine knows better, yet he's manipulative and awful and petty and just a bad, he's a really good villain, like in a way, he's like kind of like mustache twirling villain, which I kind of like, I like those villains, they're fun, they're campy, um, but he's awful, he's petty and terrible. I'm hoping to like get at least 200 pages, if not today, I don't know if I'll make it, but I'm gonna read a little bit more now. I have plans for today. I wanna go to the library because I don't have City of glass so i'm gonna pick that up from the library with my kids we're gonna make some cupcakes we're gonna go to the park we're gonna do some stuff so there we go So I think I'm ready to talk. It's the next day and still working on City of Ashes. As you can see, I'm like basically halfway through. I worked really, really hard to um, get to around 2.30, which like I said, kind of give me about halfway through the book. Okay, so I <laughs> have some feelings. I'm just, I'm enjoying myself. I really am. And I kind of feel the same way about City of Bones when I was reading it. I, like I'm enjoying the reading experience and I'm enjoying my time, but like I'm kind of bored at the same time. So that's how I'm feeling about this. I've never been like so gripped where like I can't put the book down. I'm constantly thinking about like, okay, how many more pages do I have to get to in order to like get my reading count in. My goal now for like almost every day, I don't think it's gonna happen today, but it's to read like 200 pages. And I pushed myself to 2.30 so I can at least get halfway through this book, right? So I was just constantly thinking about 
getting to my page count. Like I said, I am enjoying it. Why do I enjoy it? I think I enjoy it because it's like urban fantasy. It's paranormal romance. Like it's one of my favorite genres ever. So I think it almost doesn't matter what I read. I'm gonna like it. But like I said, I was bored. The most interesting part was like Simon's transformation. I think that's all I'm gonna say. That was like one of the times where I'm like, oh my goodness, what's happening? And then when Jace was in the city of bones when he was there i thought that was really interesting i don't know like i'm enjoying my experience it's almost like re-watching a series for <laughs> or like re-watching your favorite series where like you're enjoying your time but like is not nearly as good as the first time that's how i kind of feel right now and sometimes it feels like a slog because it is very long i really think buffy the vampire slayer is a huge influence on this because i just keep on seeing things i'm like that happened in buffy <laughs> like, <laughs> i know i see stuff like that but like in the last book simon gets turned into a rat and i know that happens in buffy and then there was a mention it was just kind of like offhanded it was just like a side character who isn't like prominent he was just there for like one scene and he was a werewolf and he's dating a red-headed witch and i just thought that was just like i just keep seeing things and even just like magnets and alec i kind of parallel them with like buffy and angel even though they're not the same characters the whole like immortal falling in love with a mortal who happens to be kind of like a superhero like i don't know i just i see all the things and i can't help but seeing them i don't know how much i'm gonna get done reading i have things to do i've just been kind of like not doing much this morning been relaxing but i i probably will get at least some reading done today So, I have so much to update. I did finish City of Ashes a couple days ago now, but I liked this okay. I really did. About halfway through, I switched to the audiobook, and that worked so much better for me because I was kind of getting bored. And the more I reflect on this book, I think back of City of Bones and kind of realize I was feeling the same way. Now, the reason why I think I gave it four stars is I read it so slow, where I was reading like 20 pages a day, and I was kind of just reading it to read it right like I was enjoying the fact that I was reading something not that I was necessarily like obsessed with the story and I kind of felt this way too like I was feeling like even though I was enjoying everything I was kind of bored so my enjoyment level is like four but since I was bored I'm gonna drop it to three and I think City of Bones I'm going to have to drop it down to a three as well it did ramp up near the end which I really liked the romance was okay in here but now that I'm like moving on to City of the Glass, City of Glass, I am feeling more and more uncomfortable, especially in this one. The romance, without trying to like give spoilers away, I can sympathize with these characters because people are manipulating them and their emotions when it comes to the romance. And you know, it's kind of keeping them apart or whatever. And they're struggling with their feelings they're young you know they don't quite know what they're doing nothing happens except when they're being manipulated and forced to do stuff that they probably shouldn't and here they finally like act on their feelings and it does make me feel really uncomfortable like i think the thing i think i would liked better is if they just kept being appropriate i guess and didn't act out on their feelings i know what the end result is like i've read this series before but it's still very uncomfortable like i can't quite get behind it i think i can get behind it more if there was just pining and trying to get over it and and then things resolving i am enjoying this a lot more like it's feeling like a four star and i think it's because it's set at alicante they're going to the shadow hunter city and it feels like a fantasy world which i kind of like like there's no technology or anything in the city nothing like that works there's no like cars or anything they have like indoor plumbing but that's about it and so i do like it feeling like a true fantasy and less like an urban fantasy and things are finally getting revealed which i am enjoying i'm enjoying like finding out how everything falls into place again like i kind of forget a lot <laughs> of stuff 
Um, obviously once it happens I remember but I'm kind of surprised how much I don't remember so I'm enjoying all that I'm enjoying there's a second relationship in here that I'm enjoying seeing the fallout of it's kind of like a secondary happening on the sidelines but I'm kind of enjoying seeing all that and there's a lot of action happening and I think the thing that I'm mostly enjoying is the reveals and I'm enjoying the horror of it the reveals are horrific to some degree like the things that valentine has done and there's some like core scenes kind of that i'm enjoying too so um yeah i'm really really liking it i'm not quite halfway i'm on page 234 and this is like a 541 page book so i'm um, not quite halfway but almost there i'm hoping to like read a little bit over 200 pages today so three stars city bones is gonna be a three star after having reflecting on everything and this probably will end up being a four star um so far it's sitting there i'm enjoying it and i'm gonna keep reading I'm just going to lean like this for now. <laughs> My gosh. Because I'm gonna use this to prop you up because the camera's not high enough. Um, I'm on page 440. I deliberately do, did that because that means I only have 100 pages left in the book. So I am almost done. Let's fix this. That's better. So I'm going to do my makeup while I talk to you about the book, I guess. I don't know if I have much to say, though. That's the problem. Like, I'm really enjoying it. Like, it's not like I'm not. I'm less squeamish about the romance now. Uh, because things are finally getting resolved. Like, thank the Lord. Because I was starting to really feel uncomfortable about it. Even though, like, I know <laughs> what happens. That's the thing that's so funny. It's like... I know how it gets resolved like it's not a secret to me but I couldn't help but feel so uncomfortable by it in books one and even two a little bit I was feeling so sympathetic to them like the couple I guess we'll just say I'm trying to be as vague as possible but I feel like most people have read this series before so it's not even like that surprising but like, I feel like people know what I'm talking about but I was uncomfortable. Like, I couldn't help but be uncomfortable. But like I said, I was feeling sympathetic in books one and two. Because I can sympathize with falling for someone and then finding out that you can't be together. And then struggling to get over those feelings. Like, I can, like, get... I can sympathize with that. I can understand it. I just can't understand then acting on the feelings... I don't know like I just I can't sympathize with that I can sympathize with still having the feelings like I don't think it's wrong having the feelings and what's wrong is like acting on them right like when you're when it's not supposed to work and then just giving in I can't I can't be sympathetic to that I don't know why but I can't even though in this case it's forgiven so I don't know I like this so much better than book two and even book three I think and I think it's because of all the reveals and I think it's because like things are finally getting answered and I find like the things that Valentine has done so interesting and creepy. I'm enjoying like all the reveals and the new developments when it comes to all the characters. I like I'm enjoying like the direction that Simon's character is about to go in soon. I like war stuff I guess. I like stuff like that. I think it's fun which sounds weird, but I like stories with war in them as well. Does this make me look so washed out? 
maybe maybe i don't need that on it's very bright i was gonna like stay and read but i've been so tired that today it's been so hard to wake up i've had three cups of coffee and i'm still not awake since i was so tired i was just gonna stay home but the next books sorry my powder is like basically done the next books in this series is available at my library i put on hold on them because i didn't know how long it was going to take and they're available so I'm gonna go pick them up and I guess the next reading vlog is me reading more of this series. I'm actually more excited. So last time I read the series was like so long ago now. I can't tell you when I read them, I don't remember, but it's been years um, since I last read this series. And I remember feeling like after this book, book three, I was kind of done with the series and I didn't understand why she kept writing. And I remember when I picked up book four, I was kept on having those feelings. I'm like, why is there another book? And I've definitely softened on that opinion when it comes to, I don't know, like she's clearly made the decision just to keep writing stories in this world. And she has every right to do that. Like if people like it and they want to read these stories, then she has the right to keep writing. I've kind of softened my opinion on such things. Like I know, like I love, TV shows that go on forever sometimes and you know if people want that stuff they have the creators have the right to keep telling stories I'm gonna pick up those books and I have to like go to the store and get some stuff that I need to get the plan was to read the hundred pages during the day now I don't know I'm just so tired that like I don't know when I'm gonna get to stuff like that okay so I'm back from running errands and I did get the books um so let's see if i can get this thing off they put a sticker with your like hold number on um so i got book four city of fallen angels and then book five city of lost souls um the book six is someone has it i'm on number two so we'll see after i'm done this vlog i guess i'm gonna move on So, I did it. I finished it. City of Glass. So since I wasn't feeling the best yesterday, I just, I finished it on, audio, on audiobook. That's the way I decided to do it. So um, that worked really well for me. So I kind of read this book like physically and on audiobook. I kind of went back and forth and I liked the audiobook a lot. I liked the narrator. Um, I forget who the narrator is, but I really liked it. So she does the voices it's a female narrator and she does the voices really well. Sometimes female narrators who do male voices sound weird, but I never felt that way. So I do recommend the audiobook. The epilogue felt kind of long, um, but that's okay. Like, you know, you want everything wrapped up. At the end, I like the callback to the Infernal Devices. There was a bit of a glimpse there that I really enjoyed. And I, I'm just glad that, I don't know, I just liked how everything wrapped up and how everything kind of fell into place i guess um so i do recommend this series um as of right now i guess three bones three stars city of ash three stars and then this is a four stars i still really enjoy my time like the three stars are not a bad rating in my mind sometimes the three stars for me is but in this case it's more like i'm being nitpicky i was a little bit bored i think i like city of bones more than City of Ash because I always like an origin story in um, or just like book one in a series. I always enjoy the setup and I always love the tropes of a girl fish out of water learning about a new fantasy world um, and learning about the magic systems and stuff like that. Like I always love those. So um, I guess that one's three stars. So I managed to finish that and I did manage to read a little bit of this and I'm like so excited to read this. I was kind of pushing myself to pick up City of Glass at least a little bit, but this like I got sucked in right away. I was like already laughing and horrified at the same time. I couldn't believe that was possible, but I was. Um, some adventures are already gonna happen at first and like, I don't know, I just love it. And I love um, the introduction to 
Cicely, who is Will's sister. I'm really excited to see her as a character, and I'm glad we get to like see from her perspective too. I'm just excited that we're getting introduced to her as a character. I'm kind of like shipping her with Gabriel, <laughs> to be honest, um, which I think would be so much fun. I'm really excited. I only read 30 pages, but I'm like already like, yes. Let's go. I'm excited. I ha this is the first one in this vlog where I haven't read it before. Um, this is not a reread. This is the first time I'm reading it. And I just love this era in general. Like, historical romance is one of my favorite genres. It's no surprise that I would love this. And historical fantasy, even better. Victorian time, yes please. So I'm really excited to read this. That far along you can see I have a tab there I've been trying to like divide up my days or how much to read um, so I'm hoping to read up to the orange tab this morning and then hopefully finish the book today I've not been really consistent with my reading but I'm going to try my best today so I'm on page 326 it's a 570 page book so I'm more than halfway which is really exciting and as you probably could see from I think I have at least one clip if not more this book has been so emotional it's been so hard oh I shouldn't be surprised that it's so gut-wrenching but it's kind of taking me off guard with how emotional I've been. It's just, I've like cried through this entire book. Um, it's not so bad anymore because I feel like a lot of the emotional conclusions have happened. Um, some resolutions already like on the emotional side and some reveals has happened like we knew them but revealed to other characters has happened. It's just been, <laughs> it's been a lot of like emotional so the first half I just been like crying all the time so maybe that's why I took a break too because like it's so emotional and exhausting it's so good though like this may be my favorite so far I'm not sure they're all five stars and this is like a five star series for me it's so good I highly recommend it and I can't quite decide if this is my favorite one or not I think I'll know by the end but things are slowly getting revealed and I'm just really enjoying my time, even though it's very emotional. I am enjoying this read so much. And obviously, I think it's becoming clear that Cassandra Clare is a favorite author. Even though there's some books that didn't quite, like, reach my standard, I still enjoy every single book. Even though some books I rated at three stars, I enjoy it. But, you know, there's just some critiques or just sometimes I would get a little bored. But like I like her stories, I think they're fun, and this is the best one so far. So I'm really excited to read The Last Hours. Like I think I'm gonna really, really like that series as well. And I just love it so much. It's so emotional though. Like that's all I do is cry. <laughs> I cry, cry, cry no matter what. Something's happened and I'm like, is this the end of that story? Is that the end of that for this character? Or is something else gonna happen? And I kind of think something else is going to happen. I remember being kind of spoiled. I don't know if I understood what the person said. But I think I heard someone talk about like um, other short stories later on in the series. And it kind of spoiled something. But I don't actually know. I could have misinterpreted it. So I'm not actually sure. <laughs> 
um, what's gonna happen. So, but I'm loving this so much. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's, you know, at the beginning it was kind of like, it was still always serious, but like it was a lot of action and there's still action throughout, but like then it took a very serious turn and now it's almost like we're like waiting to get to a certain point. We're waiting to get to like the end kind of final confrontation with the big baddie. So hopefully I can finish this. So I've been working my way through. I'm on page 420. I haven't quite reached my goal yet of about 26 pages before reaching my, the goal I wanted to reach. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Okay. Um, it's, I have only like 26 pages to get to the point I wanted to get to um, early this morning. This book is draining. Like I am drained. It's, a, I'm exhausted. <laughs> It's just so emotional and um, I'm loving it still. Um, but, you know, it's starting to feel like we're getting there. There were some really good moments, but <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I told you before, Jim, that you would not leave me and you are still with me. When I breathe, I will think of you for without you, I would have been dead years ago. When I wake up and when I sleep, when I lift up my hands to defend myself or when I lie down to die, you will be with me. You say we are born and born again. I say there's a river that divides the dead and the living. What I do know is that if we are born again, I will meet you in another life. And if there is a river, you will wait on the shores for me to come to you so that we can cross together. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna put on makeup. This is the clearest my skin has been in a long time, which is hard to imagine, but it's true. <laughs> I finally finished this and oh my gosh. So I like read probably like 40% of it yesterday and it took me all day. Like I am such a slow reader and I think I'm even slower when I'm loving a book because I'm such a daydreamer. Like I'd be in the middle of a sentence and I'm daydreaming about the characters and thinking up scenarios. I kid you not, like that's exactly what I do. So if I'm obsessed with this story, like I like drift off and like daydream away. Um, so I did that a lot. Plus I was endlessly emotional. I kid you not, I cried through this entire thing and not just like, like I have tears, but like, sobbed at some points like I legit sobbed through this whole book and it was exhausting and as you could probably tell I am like very emotional person I cry in almost every book like I kid you not like I cry in everything but I don't remember the last time I cried like this was the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo and even then it wasn't like this like this was like the entire thing Evelyn Hugo was probably like maybe half or more like the last third but that one really hit me and so i don't seek out this is the reason why i don't read sad books like i don't seek them out because it affects me so much like this affected me so much i liked how it ended i liked how the romance worked out i did really like it five stars the thing is <laughs> i don't know if i could ever reread this series specifically this book because you know the first two books had a certain feeling where yes there was there was like a lot of drama and it was fun and it was angsty and it was this love triangle and it was kind of like on the light-hearted um side of stories of course there were still like emotional moments but like for the most part it was just fun right and this was fun for like <laughs> the beginning and like that was about it and then after that it was just like an emotional roller coaster for me and so 
If I wanted to reread any of these books, I would maybe reread like the second book because it has a lot of gem in it. But besides that, like, I don't think I could ever reread this book because it is just so heartbreaking. And then the epilogue, I kind of wish the epilogue was not there because the epilogue really broke me. It really, really, really did. I almost wish it ended before the epilogue and then the epilogue was like part of a short story collection so we would still get that. But I understand why she included it because it kind of puts everything... It gives a lot of closure to a lot of things. So I think I have to go into spoilers now. I think I'll just like talk spoilers for this first because I just finished it and then we'll talk about the mortal instruments. What I was trying to avoid saying is I don't like seeing characters on their deathbed. I don't like seeing that. I didn't mind it with Jem because that was part of the main story but I would like when we saw Will on his deathbed, like, I don't like that. I don't like seeing the entire lifespan of a main character. I don't want to have to see them on their deathbed because it's just so heartbreaking and it's so devastating. And, like, it's, it's almost like a tragedy, <laughs> especially when you bring in, like, relationships with immortals because they see the love, their loved ones die, and it's just devastating. And so... You know, as much as there's a lot of love in the story, there's so much like tragedy and devastation. And it is really interesting to see this story from an immortal perspective because normally we're reading from a mortal perspective in these mortal, immortal relationships. So I do appreciate that, but it, it was hard. And in a lot of ways, by having this epilogue where you see... Um, the end of her relationship with Will and then moving to 2008 and seeing the beginning of Gems. Like, obviously, I love that. I love the fact that both her relationships get concluded, but in some ways, it kind of dismisses this entire book because I would have preferred to for it to have ended where Will proposes. And then, you know, it feel in some ways, it feels like you... Get this conclusion, this happier conclusion. It ends on a happier note. Where in here, it just like, it feels like it ends on a tragedy. And, you know, of course we want Jem to have his ending as well. But I prefer books that end happy. <laughs> I don't like it ending in a tragic note. And I guess that's all you could have had for the story anyways but it's so hard to read. Like I found this extremely difficult to read. I was exhausted. I read, like I said, I read like 40% of this all yesterday. That's all I did. I was just reading this book because I just kind of wanted to get it over with. And it was so exhausting. By the end, I, like <laughs> I started nine in the morning and I finished like 9.30 at night. I was so drained. I felt like people died in my life. Like that's how emotional I was throughout this whole experience. Like I said, I almost wish it ended with Will and then the whole epilogue kind of like was part of a short story collection. I understand. Like I get it why she put it there. It kind of lets Tessa have both of her love stories. Um, honestly, when it comes to like the polyamorous um, romance, I kind of prefer it this way where they take turns. I was not expecting Jem to become a silent brother. That was crazy. Like I kind of had a feeling they were gonna make she was gonna make something work. She was gonna do something, whether it was like getting raised from the dead or something. Like I felt like something like that was gonna happen. I had no idea he was gonna be a silent brother. And like that whole experience. <laughs> like we had the <laughs> this emotional roller coaster of like thinking Jem was gonna die, and then thinking he was gonna, he was dead, and Will thinking he was dead and mourning his death, and then this other emotional thing of him being alive but making this choice of being alive but separate from them. And so in a lot of ways, he kind of did die. And then this whole <laughs> emotional side of like seeing Will die, and then this other emotional part of Tessa being alone and then finally getting gems but like also knowing that their story is going to end tragically because people die like in some ways mortals dying like a mortal being with another mortal there's almost like this peace and understanding that you know at least death 
kind of saves you from grief and seeing tessa living forever and constantly suffering and never finding peace is kind of sad like there's some kind of tragedy to it it was hard it was really hard i did really like it i still gave it five stars but i don't know if i could ever read this again now the mortal instruments i feel like the thing i really wanted to talk about was mostly like jason clary's relationship i was starting to lose sympathy for them in book three because they eventually like kind of act on their feelings and i did find that really uncomfortable i didn't like it i would have preferred if nothing happened and they were just still getting over their feelings but the fact that they gave in bothered me because i don't know like i can be more sympathetic to a character who is struggling with feelings and know they shouldn't should be over it but isn't than someone who does that and then acts on them so i kind of would have preferred if there weren't some scenes and then maybe had a more good reunion once they realize the truth i think that's my opinion on that i know there's this book i really want to read called downworlders shadow hunters and downworlders or something like that and it's basically an essay collection about the series and I think they one of the essays is talking about this kind of incest plot i am curious to see what they have to say honestly i think what i've come to learn like i don't know what the other romantic tropes are used in the others like book series in this world but i think cassandra claire just likes writing taboo romances and seeing how she can make them ya and make them work in a ya setting in a like urban fantasy I can't help but think that's what she just she just loves doing because so far it's been like two taboo romances that's all i have to say so it's time to conclude this video i hope you really enjoyed it city of ashes i gave three stars city of glass i gave four and then obviously clockwork princess i'm giving five i thought i'd make this infographic of all the books in this universe and so here it is final ranking is city of bones three stars city of ash three stars city of glass four stars all the infernal devices clockwork angel clockwork prince and clockwork princess are all five stars so cassandra claire is a favorite author as of right now like i've given three of her books five stars a lot of creators kind of use that barometer where if they've given three books from an author five stars it's a favorite author so cassandra claire is a favorite author now i didn't think that was gonna happen i hope you really liked this video if you did please give it a thumbs up please subscribe if you have not done so you can follow me on instagram and goodreads and you know what i want you to keep reading bye